Hey guys, it's Dave. Today I want to do a short video on one of my very favorite Hoya. And I don't say that about every Hoya. I think anybody who's been here for a few videos knows that's true. But the Hoya Matilde is a favorite and it is definitely my favorite small leaf Hoya. And she is in bloom. I will show that off in just a second. I'm not going to bore you with the history of this plant because the history ain't boring. There was a Belgian botanist named Emilio Beguin, and apologies, Mr. Beguin, if I don't have that name pronounced correctly. He had two Hoya in bloom in his greenhouse, uh, the Hoya serpents, Hoya carnosa. There was an accidental mating. Fun fact, I was an accidental prom night mating. And a year later, in 1995, a seed pod burst, and he, just for fun, put those seeds in a terrarium, and out came two that he kept. The chuk, the sister plant to this one, which is primarily just green, I think. At least the ones I've seen, and quite pubescent. And then the Matilde, named after a friend of his daughter's. And I want to show you this beautiful star-shaped flower. It's just beautiful. And I hope that the camera is getting some of the fuzz that's on there. It's just really quite lovely. Let me point it towards the light a little bit here. Now you may have seen several of these that are very, very splashy, and I know how popular that is. I personally wouldn't spend extra money on a really splashy one. I like these freckles. But Kevin up in Canada, oh, what is his channel called? Haka Plant. I'll put it up on the screen. He has got a gorgeous, very, very, very silver one. Um, I guess if someone gave me that one, I would be interested. The, the I was going to say mother plant, but I don't think we know which is the mother plant. But the Serpents has a reputation of being a bit of a challenge to grow. I've not grown one. If you have one, let me know because I think it's a very pretty plant. Uh, I think we all know Carnosa is very easy to grow and it's, it's one of those things like on a Hoya ID on Facebook, if anybody says, I inherited this, you know, 50, 60 year old Hoya, I don't know what it is. It's a Carnosa, 100%. I don't even need to see the picture. <laughs> we know it's a Carnosa. Um, so, this has been, for me, an incredibly easy plant to grow. And I grow it in ambient conditions. I give it no special care whatsoever. I know that Doug of Vermont Hoyas has grown this and kept it, but he mentioned on his website that he it didn't live up to his expectations. He had big expectations for it, and it didn't live up to them. He didn't elaborate, so I'm not sure what it was. He did mention that a well-grown Matilde in flower is a sight to behold. Um, this has exceeded all of my expectations for sure. Um, beautiful leaves, slightly pubescent, a little, little bit fuzzy. I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. It might. And to give you a sense of scale here, it's clearly, it's not a a huge plant but you may have seen this on some video I did I honestly don't remember why I brought her out I bought this last summer and it was just a little $10 clipping about this long but the internodal spacing was much tighter so I chopped and propped it I put it in I think I put it in a maybe a three inch pot and then transferred it to this once it got going. So it has done all of this, basically all of this, in one year and flowered. And I was kind of poking around on YouTube and the internet and I, I saw a number of people mention that it takes two or three years to bloom. You know, perhaps in their conditions, you know, I mean, obviously that's what it took. Um, my experience was that this took uh, a year. And again, just, just absolutely lovely. Whoops, <laughs> hard to stretch and hold it still. 
But let me put her down for a second. I wanted to chat briefly about Hoya and buying Hoya and I want to feature her right here because as I said a favorite plant that I do nothing special for I feed her I have fed her for the last year uh, weekly and you know how I feel if you've even been on one other video of mine about waiting for leaves to go soft so can you see these leaves down at the base are all firm they are not soft they are not wrinkly there is no give to them it's time to water this plant so i do not stress out my plants and make them starve for water and food before i provide it if that works for some people by all means do it but um I should get off that hobby horse, but there are so many new viewers to this channel every time I put out a video that when people ask how I grow plants quickly, and I do get a lot of those messages, I feed and water them, truly, and <laughs> I give them light year-round. That's it. The only slightly annoying thing about Matilda is when she's putting off vines, they're just light as air. and. Um, as soon as the leaves come on, she starts draping nicely. But uh, as she's putting out the vines, she takes out a little bit of room or takes up a little bit of room. So be aware of that. But I got a, I got a message from somebody who was frustrated that he couldn't find affordable Hoya, you know, in that 5 to $8 range that um, he'd collected the $20 ones that are in tissue culture from your big box stores and, and so forth. And so I gave what I hope was um, thoughtful perspective on Hoya, you know, as somebody who grows Hoya and sells them, it's an enormous investment in time, for one thing, in that, you know, well, one, I spent hours going Hoya shopping. Now, that's fun, but it's time. And then I have to grow them, and I have to take care of them, and they have to be pest-free, and I have to provide food. Some grow slowly, some grow really, really quickly. And I'm offended when a really fast-growing Hoya, someone's charging a lot for. That's a popular Hoya. The other side of that is, if you want to get a collectible Hoya, those are oftentimes far less in demand. So, for instance, my Haifang. Um, I've offered that to a whole bunch of viewers. One person has bought one. So that means I'm taking care of that, those plants for much, much, much longer until somebody realizes what a really special plant that is. Hint, hint, everybody. <laughs> but that goes into it too. So, you know, for people that are doing it to scale, that means they're probably importing plants from Thailand or somewhere. And a lot of those plants arrive dead, mush, or need to be restarted. So a great deal goes into getting Hoya that are quite uncommon ready to sell. I mean, it's just an enormous investment, and like I said, if nothing else but time, but it isn't just time, it's money too. And it's space, you know? So all of that combined is why I couldn't possibly sell a New Guinea ghost, for instance, for five or eight dollars. I mean, nobody would do that. It would be, you'd be losing money. It'd be, it, it, sim it simply wouldn't be worth anybody's time. Now, I bought a bunch of seedlings this week that, you know, they don't look like much when you buy a seedling. And so you kind of have to know how the plant's going to grow. I think that is a good way to go. I think growing from seed is a good way to go. This is, this is just going to keep happening. Just keep poking myself. This is going to end up in my eye or perhaps in my nose here shortly. Um, so those are a couple ways to go. Another way to get inexpensive Hoya is to take a chance. Just to take a chance on a Hoya that you've never heard of. Someone might be selling a no ID meaning simply don't know what it is, and that ID can't be confirmed until it blooms. Um, and then probably someone will be able to help out on, on a Facebook group. Uh, but, for instance, this plant right here, I spent $10 to get that cutting. Now, I know looking at, you know, something 
you know, as small as this might not seem great. And if your expectation is that all Hoya grow slowly, which we have all read ad nauseum online and seen on YouTube channels, you'd probably be reluctant to do that. If you're newer to the channel, you, you wouldn't know this. <laughs> I buy all my Hoya small. So I have never purchased, I have purchased large baskets and watched them die. But I only now buy small starter plants. And yes, when I can, I like to get an active vine with several nodes on it that haven't leaked out. Um, that's, you know, that's a good thing. But every hoy I bought, and you will see them coming up, uh, they're small. And they're not cheap. You know, I did a, a trade with this person and I got a, you know, that's another way to do it, is to do a trade. So those are some ways to get Hoya at a decent price. And I know that might seem a little bit outside of the point of this video to talk about Matilde, but it isn't. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite Hoyas, let's not forget the New Guinea Ghost, <laughs> uh, is this plant, a $10 plant. And common as can be, available to anybody, and it doesn't require much. Not fancy. I mean, it is just sweet and cheap and cute. Like yours truly. Oh boy, I better sign off. Join me again in the next one where I'm going to be much more serious. I pinky swear. Bye-bye.